I do believe me. Is somebody streaming? Can you give me the link so I can watch at least? I do believe me. Once again. Colonel Ripley, I'm going down. Um, no. Uh, maybe. No. Maybe Doctor Capella. She was too long. I'm tired. I nah. I'll let him. I'll go just relax right now. It's time. We need to move. I want uh, all hands on deck on this one. Uh, there's uh, just too great a risk. I probably fall asleep. Uh, shall we take Dr. Capella down know. with us, just in case? Let's keep it icy now. Yes, uh, they're going to need to question her a bit about uh, some of her research. Uh, she should be able to speak a little bit more to the scientific aspect than I can. Hmm. What I would like to have is uh, me, you, Dr. Capella, and Sergeant Lang Telecor going down there since Sergeant Telecor was present as well when the EDV trials are coming down here. Very good. Sir, if, uh, no. if I may interject. I, uh, uh, Captain Banks has told me that Dr. Capella is not to leave until she, until Captain Banks returns from it. Very good. Stay here, then, uh, if, uh, if Captain Banks is ready, he can bring Dr. Capella. Until then, we need to begin nego negotiations right now. Alright, Alrighty, everybody uh, who's not coming down with us, uh, you're taking orders from Sergeant Angelo, is that correct? Is that understood, I mean? Time, man. Fucking time. Very good, let's move. Oh, Lord. Uh, Can we even get out this one? Sounds like it's coming from where we're going. Alright. Stay, stay, uh, stay careful, guys. Stay safe. Alright, let's move. You guys stay safe, too. Um, this is Dr. Capella. Um, is there any who, who personnel right now in the campus? Dr. Bell just sent me to either boy, that is a negative. The boy, Dr. Anderson, is coming here to keep up assist us, and we will probably be the only doctor down there, well, up there. This is Dr. Anderson, I'm currently in the, the, the squad that is going down. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, um, okay, um, can I assign you to help Dr. Anderson? He, he's just going to group. I I think we should probably have a calm silence from here on out. Only uh Agreed. Only if there's a code red about to happen should we be uh Aye. anybody know where they with? actually wanna meet up? On the airfield. What exact location? Uh I, my only understanding is the airfield. We'll have to see when we get there. I uh um, this is Sam and you, I would like to have Sergeant Angelo's squad and stay in the woods, scout out the area. Everybody, everybody who's not attending down here should gather up with Sergeant Angelo. Falcon 1, as soon as you got a position for the meeting, let me know so we can set up with eyes on over now. Copy that, Falcon 1. I meant to out for now. I'm in drastic situation, Colonel. Considering what happened today already. It doesn't feel good, I'll be honest, but that's what we got to work with. Yeah, they are, not taking from the ATC. Uh, Falcon 1, this is Sam, do I believe they are gathered up at the ATC control tower? I repeat, they are probably gathered up at the control tower, I do see movement there. This is Dr. Anderson, I was called back by Dr. Capala. I'm moving back to camp, over. Copy that, Dr. Anderson. 
Since now on out, have one calm silence. Only, only call out really, really important things. things. I repeat, only call out really important things when you see movement in the trees to the another man. I repeat, not our man. Call out things, things that are important. important. That that meant you out. Out. What about it's just gonna be the VDV down here? With their full force. Looks like ten plus contacts at the ATC. I do believe I count nine men, so... Maybe I need to get my glasses changed. Oh my god, so god I've got them, man. man. Captain Kirchhoff. Um, the law, uh, Listen, uh, sorry for short, short notice, eh? Uh, but uh, I thought this was important, so... I wanted to get everyone here as soon as possible. I understand you're a busy man, eh? Lots of reports. <laughs> no, they never end, Captain. I'm sure you can relate. Uh, no, I... Uh, uh, my privates give me plenty to uh, have to deal with. This is Falcon uh, 1. Uh, we have a civilian. That is what they're good for. You know? I'm venting their frustrations at the wrong time. Oh, Sound oh well. Privates will be privates, eh? Anyway, let's see here. Is CTF uh, commander here? Let's see. Uh, Come on. Okay. You cannot address no bitch here, huh? Eh? You must meet you on the Okay, uh, like warrant officer. Like last time we met Mr. Roy, huh? Yeah? Oh, yes, the tents. Uh, yeah. Seems like forever ago now. Come a long way. Okay, uh, NATO representative, uh, state your name, rank, since it's not warrant officer. Sergeant First Class David Elliott, representative of warrant officer John Reynolds, right here. Sergeant. Okay. I'm Sergei Kirchhoff, uh, Captain of VTV Forces. Uh, the reason why I wanted everyone here is uh, we are the, uh, you know, we're the heads of state, you know, in this area. <laughs> Military state, that is. Obviously, CTF is in charge of uh, country, but uh, some of us are more welcome here than others, but at the end of the day, we're all here. And so, since we're all, uh, you know, uh, military men, we've got to work together instead of shoot each other. And right now it Hello? looks, you know, like we're yeah, at DEFCON 2. Uh, we're yeah. discharging our rifle at the infect if you hear shot. Roger. Well, we're right here, so we'll, we'll see it. Thanks for the, uh... So there's complaints all around, okay? I know UN's pissed at us, I'm pissed at the UN. NATO's probably pissed at, uh, you know, CTF for some reason, and CTF's pissed at VDV and UN for some reason. Okay, we've all got that issue, and I'm more than welcome to uh, settle those at a different time, you know? But right now, oh, Sergei wants to discuss possibility of uh, uh, setting up, like, South Ligurian uh, Security Council. You know, one or two members of each of the uh, uh, militaries would meet uh, once a week to discuss uh, uh, quarantine zone, mine moving, you know, CTF prerogatives, safe zones, popping up in different areas. You know, important shit. Or like, hey, I've got complaint with UN, let's discuss it at the Security Council so we have unbiased opinions 
about uh, the fuckery going on. You know, I think uh, the more communication between our great establishments will be more peaceful. And I think uh, we don't want to kill each other here. You know, none of us wants to kill anyone that doesn't have to die. Oh, and I don't see any man here who, uh, you know, deserves death. At least not yet. Eh? UN fuckers are pushing me though, eh? <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy, hey, that was unkind, I'm sorry. Is this, uh, is this agreeable amongst all parties? No, nah, no. I'm agreeable. I, uh, I don't think this is a go, right? Okay, Neto, you think? Alright, uh, sounds pretty agreeable to me. Okay. Good security council, we can work out our, work out our differences in a peaceful manner with talks. I believe so. Um, and we can make sure, make sure everything goes smoothly. UN, what yes. do you think? Well, actions uh, speak louder than words, Captain Kirchhoff, and as you've seen, we were willing to, uh, relocate all the way from the airfield in the northeast all the way down here to the southern coast to avoid bloodshed. So, uh, our commitment to peace and, uh, the avoidance of, uh, bloodshed is, uh, is sincere. The, no, that we're all, uh, in agreement that this is a thing that should be done. I hereby declare, uh, first security council meeting, uh, started now. Uh, Mr. CTF well. has issues he wants to speak about, uh, uh, about the UN. Could you please put on the table your issues so we can discuss it? Ah, uh, no. So at the moment we have had, though, you say, um, some quality of life issues to start with, with the United Nations at the moment, with more or less you have troops disarming some of my men, apparently, in the, in the middle of the Chernogorsk area, and you also have troops who would not listen to any of the orders given by my men within our camps in the Chernogorsk area at the moment. For instance, we had a private earlier today who was, uh, how you say, dressed up in full uh, camo netting as a sort. He came into our camp today, taking supplies from our tents, and when we caught him, he told us that he was the United Nations and he could do whatever the mm. fuck he wants. That's his quote. Oh, well, he's been uh, dealt with. He's been uh, relieved from I apologize, his son, by on behalf of the United them. Nations, yes. Private Coulson has been uh, deemed unfit mentally to serve. Uh, apparently, he's the stress got to him. He's been relieved of duty. I assure you that won't happen again. No, I don't believe so. All right. Well, then, other than that, we have, uh, what is it, uh, is she a sergeant or a lieutenant now or something? Some Mrs. Rodriguez or something. You know who I speak of? Yes, Lieutenant Rodriguez. Uh. All right. Well, she has... I don't know exactly what her reasoning for doing so is, but she's been cited as pointing weapons at civilians and telling them to get out or they would be killed. She has been telling police officers that we have given jurisdiction in the downtown area of Chernogorsk that they should hand over their weapons to her or that they should leave the country. Things like these that should not be tolerated. I don't understand the reasoning for any of these actions beforehand, and she never provided any excuses or of any sort to the rest of us. And to be quite frank with you, the, after the fiasco that happened when the camp in Cabanina was abandoned, we haven't really been having any of the United Nations personnel cooperate well with either the CDF or the VDV at the moment. Because, well, I don't exactly well, understand hey, why. Don't, but... uh, don't, uh, don't uh, put words in VTVs with all uh, due respect. Eh? That they cooperated sir, and sir. avoided war by getting fuck out of Northeast. I put a little bit of stock in that action. I won't say that completely well. But sorry to that's true. Continue. No, that's true. But what I was referring to was more or less what happened in the apartment buildings earlier today. We had men doing routine patrols, and uh, we had uh, some of you boys come to our camp in the VDV, and we were having a good time. Uh, we relieved some trader men of, uh, how you say, some supplies that they should not have been carrying, and we were going about our business. Now, amongst this, we had... I don't even know who it was, because we could never even get a name off of them, but it was two men who were supposed to be guarding your camp, I presume, on the rooftops, who kept firing shots at our men on the rooftops, for no reason, just at windows, not clearly not meaning to hit us, and if they were, it was very strange, mm -hmm. but when we went to investigate, we couldn't find any of them, but we could clearly see the blue berets on their head. When not that six hours ago. Six hours ago, you say, well then I do feel like it wasn't our men, was present at time. 
Were any but shots uh, what I call come out of getting from our position? Did they uh, believe they mm. were under threat, or did they think they were infected? Uh, any reports? I don't really know if it was our guy shooting. We uh, we have a we'll need to uh, make sure we're on the same page with that. Uh, as long as your men uh, are uniformed and uh, uh, carry out their their duties, they're not to be fired upon by UN peacekeepers. I'll make sure that word gets uh, to the lower ranks. Uh, you have full jurisdiction. This is your territory. Uh, we're here to assist. We're not here to claim land or disarm your people. As long as they were credentialed and not just uh, you know in civilian garb, there's no reason they should have been disarmed. So uh, that'll be dealt with, and uh, that will not uh, happen again. No, no. All right. Well, that's all I have to bring to the table at the moment. Uh... Okay. So that everyone else I, want hear, uh, uh, I want to hear NATO's opinion on it, huh? What do you think? Uh... Well, I do know that at one point, uh... We had a UN incident at our former pop, uh, pop. Incident? Okay, Where was this? Not, uh, not an opinion, you know, that's uh, uh, Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> opinion. Um, I... Uh, as for opinion, I, I, I have to agree with the CDF. There has been incidents with the UN. Even we've had them. Um, I'm glad to hear that you guys are working it out, and you need to get into... Yeah. What sort of incidents are you talking about? You said in back in your old camp? Uh, there, there was an incident with a lieutenant who showed up and they contacted us about a possible joint camp at Polana factory and then when they showed up they showed up they started trying to pull rank and say oh well we're here you now answer to us NATO and it's like no we don't um, and they started to kind of strong arm us and say well we have more men you need us more than we need you, and tried to basically strong arm us, and I'm not sure who the lieutenant sentence? was, I believe, yes, the, there was right, the only lieutenant I do recall was uh, present was Lieutenant Hodge, I myself was constantly speaking uh, with the major on the radio around the premises, I was not notified by anything, any, any of this. Was he operating in that area? And then after a while... Mm, I do believe Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Hodge was around that area. Uh, he was helping us move our uh, base of operation. Thank you for the report, then Sergeant. I'll uh, while, investigate we this with the Lieutenant. Yes, thank you. Other than that, I, I have to agree that working it out, with both of you working it out and making sure that CDF is in uniform and understands that it is their territory, it is their land, we all should respect their land and make sure that their best interests are all of our interests at the same time. That way we can keep this infection from one spreading. Uh, that way we keep this infection from uh, spreading anywhere and, you know, we can keep, keep it contained probably here and then maybe eradicated at some point. Thank you, Serge. I have a suggestion, eh? How about, okay, everyone here has their undercover agents, you know, who is not going to be in uniform. You know, they're going to be fucking, you know, sneaking around and looking and listening, you know. Trust the civilian, either to find out the uh, terrorist sector, I don't care what the mission is. However, if the mission takes them into a uh, enemy, not enemy, a uh, other military camp, you know, like say I've got uh, inside guy on the UN and he's fucking around, okay. Yeah, I think everyone should offer leniency, uh, you know, if the UN, uh, if he's being fuckboy, right? And he's like, hey, secretly I'm, I'm undercover, okay, I'm VTV, don't fuck with me, let me finish mission. Uh, but uh, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't allow any other undercover agent be allowed public leniency, you know what I'm saying? If we are seen giving a potential civilian, you know, leniency for shit we wouldn't let other civilians do, that would be, uh, you know, not good. So, you know, you tell them to, uh, you know, put hands up, you stupid bitch, you're coming with us, and you take him inside a private area, and you get his identification, you go, oh, 
Oh, undercover, all right. Uh, get the fuck out of here, out the back door, man, okay? Does that make sense? So we don't, like, fucking start a war over, like, eh, they initiated on me, they've got me captured, you know, like, oh, chill out, they're probably just doing, eh, uh, uh, due diligence to civilians. It would be routine, you know? He has to seem normal to these civilians in the area, I agree. Do you agree of course, we have with? to have some sort of uh, credentials to understand that these uh, undercover agents are indeed legitimate, and not just uh, civilians uh, uh, grasping at straws. Uh, do you have some proposal as, in terms of some credentials? Uh, the Russians, we've got the uh, VTV's got this special little dog tag thing. Uh, I think that's what you would call it. Uh, it's like a necklace. It's got a little parachute thing on it with some guns. It's very nice and pretty. Every uh, VTV man will have this while he's on duty. Hmm. I don't know. Every uh, UN member will have this UN ID card. Bah. How about CTF? Well, the CBF, I'll have dog tags and, uh, the, the, you know, where there's respective diligences belong and whatnot. Their names will be on it and so forth. It's easy to recognize and very hard to fake. They're made out of very cheap fucking steel, let's be honest, but, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Sergeant. How about NATO? You guys got the coin or something, right? Challenge Sergeant. Coin. Nah. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> Perhaps he's a little out of zone. It's fine, sorry. I'll speak for NATO and say they've got challenge coins on them, you know. They've got little coins that say, hey, I'm fucking NATO, you know. I think, uh, I'm just saying, uh, you know, uh, sweet. Oh, hey, hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I had something in my head. Yeah, no problem, huh? You guys all have, uh... Standard uh, identification means, da? Uh, like challenge coin. Oh God. Uh, I think it's better. Our uh, identifications are. My radio is blowing up a little bit. Um, our identification, we have personal. Uh, we have personal identification cards, like cat cards, for Americans. Uh, I believe the British have their form of identification, so just ask for their military ID and they should present it to you. Okay. Listen, uh, I think I speak for everyone here that please pay attention, huh? We've all got busy things to be doing and none of us want to be standing in field for longer than we have to, okay? I, I agree. My, my, my mistake. I'm very sorry. No problem, huh? Uh, okay. okay. So, just so you're aware, we just agreed that uh, if there is anyone in your organization, UN's organization, CDF's organization, or VDV, un working undercover, and he's clearly dressed as a civilian, and he's doing some fuckery that you would arrest any other civilian for, you are to arrest him and take him somewhere private and uh, figure out who his, what his identification is and then release him, okay? And nobody will take that as an act of war. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Yes, I understand. That sounds like a good good plan. I agree to that. Okay. UN, we've uh, not let you talk. Could you please uh, take the floor with any of your issues? Well, all I need is, uh, now that I've seen the gesture of uh, goodwill in, in this meeting in the first place, uh, our uh, efforts so far have been... Well, less than fruitful in terms of uh, investigating the nature of this illness, and much of that is to do with uh, security concerns, uh, just things that really don't need to be taking priority over humanitarian efforts, to be frank. It appears to me that if we are uh, having a Security Council meeting and we are uh, coordinating our efforts, that uh, it could be agreed upon that an attack on any one of us would be attack, an attack on all of us. There are multiple terrorist organizations operating freely within the country, as uh, heard over the radio. There's a, a People's Liberation Army or something like that, and these Children of Eden cult people, and uh, some Mexican gang running around. It's uh, it's becoming dangerous with these mask-wearing lunatics, and uh, to be frank, if we could simply uh, have an agreement, a, secure, a joint security agreement between our, uh, our groups, then I believe we could operate uh, more effectively and uh, pursue our missions. What sort of agreement do you want to come to? 
A joint security agreement, Captain uh, Kirchhoff. Something to the uh, degree of if uh, a terrorist organization were to strike any one of us when they, uh, we appeared to be weakest, for example, while we were out on a uh, uh, fact-finding mission, perhaps with a doctor and a small security detachment, if our World Health Organization uh, people were under attack and UN peacekeepers were not close enough, but perhaps a Cherna Russian patrol or a, a Russian uh, quarantine uh, team or... Uh, uh, a NATO uh, security team or just happened to be closer, perhaps we could have a joint uh, security agreement where we could call an aid whoever happens to be closest to come to the aid of any other of us. And an attack on perhaps the Chern Russians by a terrorist organization would be retaliated by uh, the rest of us. Okay, so an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us, is what you're suggesting. Uh, precisely. I can say from my point of view, uh, uh, we are going to be in the north the large majority of the time, and I will likely not uh, pull forces from the quarantine zone to start policing anything itself, you know? But uh, if we see these organizations in the north, obviously we will attack them, but uh, I think your closest ally here is going to be the CDF, as they have the largest military presence nearest to your camp, you know? I cannot promise the VTV will be very effective in fighting, uh, uh, you know, everyone in the south, which is where everyone will be, you know, especially if we're fucking on people in the north. So, it's, uh, good I enough, don't Captain know how even, they, even if you didn't leave your quarantine zone, perhaps, let's say uh, we were attacked by clown Mary, mask wearing lunatics at our base, and they des decided to take refuge up north because they knew that's not where we're not going to be. Uh, it wouldn't be so safe for them if they were to discover that uh, uh, your men would be to retaliate uh, because they were taking refuge in your area. Likewise, if someone were to take refuge in the south, we would retaliate if they were to attack NATO or the BDV. Uh, that's the gist of it. Okay, that sounds good to me. NATO, what do you think? I'm in full agreement with that. Uh, you know, you guys need help in the north, you're welcome to call us. CDF needs help in the south with the UN, you're welcome to call us as well. We will do what we can to spread our our forces around to help if anybody needs it and completely agree with this. It sounds something that is definitely something that is most agreeable and would help relations with all of us in the whole. Mr. CTF, what do you think? You good or no? Well, at the moment, I would say we are having trouble holding down our borders at the time, but uh, we can spare troops to things in the local area, the immediate area of where we are currently stationed, but we can't send the troops all the way across the south 30 kilometers to go reinforce the patrol every now and then, because at the moment, as I said, we're already dealing with some of these, how you say, uh, hostilities from these groups, these, uh, these, this Mexican cartel of a sort, this MS-13. We've been dealing with them for the past two days, we've been dealing with these children of Eden for the past two weeks, and as it happens, there's this militia that's being brought up against the, uh, the VDV here that we're helping to try and dismantle as it happens, because that's not productive for anybody. But we can respond if it is an immediate area. But as I said, we can't send troops 30 kilometers north to help you boys out, or probably anywhere else. If you're in the area, though, we can. Understood. That sounds reasonable. Okay, uh, I'm going to put in one more thing, and then we'll get to uh, uh, side issues with uh, our lieutenants. Uh, obviously, I see uh, there are a few more issues to hammer out. The quarantine's off. Obviously, this is a big deal, I think, to everyone here. CTF doesn't want half, or I suppose three-fourths their country, you know, fucking occupied by goddamn Russians, you know. And UN wants to, I'm sure, to send uh, four days into the north to get, uh, you know, samples, and I'm sure NATO has fucking, I don't know, leads on terrorist camps somewhere in the north, right? So you all need we, to get into the north. Duh. And I'm here to tell you that the VDV is not going to uh, impede any military, uh, anyone who's involved in the South Ligurian uh, Security Council we will not fuck with, you know. All permissions is obviously open. That being said, uh, 
Sergei would really like it if we could uh, come up with a itinerary to shrink this goddamn zone so I don't have to be spread so thin for so long. So what, Mr. CTF, what do we need to do to get your men more secure to get this thing uh, smaller, I think? You know, what steps do we have to take? Well, at the moment, I would say, to start with, let's make it very clear that I don't think civilians need to be anywhere where it's not safe. So allowing just, you know, military personnel such as we have here, NATO, CDF, BDV, UN, that seems more than preferable. But if we can't reinforce, they say, this quarantine amongst all of us, then perhaps we should shrink it. So if we would have sort of an itinerary, as you said, to move from one territory to the next, starting in Chernigorsk, moving north, then west, then east, and so forth. We set up a base of operations somewhere, clearing this quarantine zone bit by bit until it is safe for civilians to return to the area. Something like that sounds preferable. Da, da. What do you need from BTV to accelerate this process? Well, if that's the case, then what we need is for, uh, if we can probably accomplish this by clearing town by town at the district. If the BTV wants to take the west, the UN take the East or the CDF take the East, something like that. We can go through clearing infected town by town. There's no reason for us not to allow the civilians to return to these areas. Duh. Okay, could you get a, a list, an itinerary made, and have it emailed, not emailed, but mailed or sent through messenger to all of the Security Council members so that we can assist you in uh, getting this thing shrunk so people can go home, especially Russians. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So uh, I would definitely able to, uh, how you say, assign different people to a town of a sort and say, this is yours, clear the town, and then, I don't know, civilians can return to that area. Get that UN stands uh, ready to assist with this. Thank Understood. you. Uh, NATO? NATO can assist where needed. We are in the middle of a move, so our our supplies and manpower may be a little bit limited at the time, but once we finally secure a position down again, we'll be able to lend a helping hand. Okay, I think we can all agree that CTF should be the authority on uh, territorial claims and quarantine, uh, uh, how you say, uh, movement. Uh, I will put out uh, one warning though, that uh, we will not shrink quarantine zone past uh, that uh, Vibor to Novi Road, you know, that eastern line there until we see extreme stability. You know, it's going to take a lot to convince Sergei to push it past that. But uh, we are certainly willing to push, uh, you know, the new GM line further north if we can all get together and fucking kick infection ass. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. We'll have to be a okay. methodical effort. Uh, we'll have to be coordinated. These things are uh, <clears throat> relentless and they tend to slip into cracks. All right, we'll await CT orders on uh, that directive. Mr. You and your captain there has said uh, he might have something to say. Captain Hawk, you have the floor. Hi. Um, it came to my attention, one of my corporals came up to me and said that Kremlin doesn't recognize United Nations as a military organized force anymore. One of your privates told us that, as well, I'm hearing stories around from civilians that you're considering us as civilians. What's that about? Uh, that Kremlin is because you are not that, a military uh, force. You are a peacekeeping force. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you're, well, what? It seems like you classed us as, as civilians. Yeah, no, a peacekeeper uh, is a glorified policeman. Uh, <laughs> if you'll excuse uh, the language. No, listen here. Uh, Listen, I think everyone knows we're fucking pissed at you in here, but there's no reason to throw bees into the nest, okay? There's enough bees here. Duh. Apologies, Capitan, but these are the same people who threatened my private's lives earlier in the day. Duh. Uh, duh. Uh, I will answer your question by saying uh, it was not Kremlin who said that. That was Sergei. I've taken operational control of the... Uh, uh, new quarantine orders as the mayor has come down with sickness and he's the uh, handed command to me. Given your recent uh, actions in the last 72 hours, it has made my faith in your organization near zero. But uh, if we're ranking you on a scale of 1 to 10, you showed up, huh? You're talking sense to me now. You're no longer civilian in Sergei's eyes. You're now fucking 
You're at the one. Nah, ten being fucking CDF, I call you fucking baseline. Huh? We're not friends. I'm not going to pretend we like each other. That being said, I'm not going to fucking shoot you if I don't have to. And I appreciate you being here, at least trying to work things out. Uh, so the gay attitude will improve in time, I think. Satisfied, Captain Hawk? For me, it could have been like this all the time. Aye, for now. Very good. My lieutenant has the issue. Could you please bring it to light? Uh, Rosho, by all means. It has come to my attention that the scouting party that was sent to Chernogorsk this afternoon has had their lives threatened by both the UN and the NATO. I have two names here that stand out. I would need some clarification on this, from you especially. The names here say a representative, a high-ranking representative from the UN named uh, uh, Capitan Hawk and a high-ranking representative of the NATO called Captain Banks, although I might have gotten the rank wrong. Mm, this is Simon too. You can bring Captain Banks down here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you're saying uh, Captain Banks from NATO? Could you... Uh, I am unsure of the ranks, but the last Captain name Banks is down Banks. Here. Oh, Banks. Banks is no longer a member of the NATO forces. He he willingly left our agreement uh, Falcon to go to... Uh, Oh, uh, this is Simon too. Could you send Captain Banks down here? Uh, he identified as the, as the who, uh, I am uh, unsure what is going on. Either the NATO are very disorganized, or perhaps they do things differently than we do in the Russian military. But, but well, it seems uh, like, as they say, a clusterfuck, though. He, well, the thing is, is NATO being a defensive agreement for the most part, as you guys know from your past of the Soviet Union and all that jazz. Um, the, not all the forces of the U.S. need to be present for a NATO presence. So Banks took some select forces and from our from our group and separated himself from us. He's no longer considered a active member of NATO and shouldn't be treated with the same respect that you treat the rest of our men. He is. Well, he was representing we himself a, as a NATO member in the camp of the UN earlier today. That he uh, uh, is. That clarification would be needed. He he shouldn't be. Uh, those are my peacekeepers. It's fine. Officially left us. He has officially left us. Oh, so if you see him addressing himself oh, as a member of NATO, you. do do not take it as a means of we endorse him in any way, shape, or form. He has left us, and we uh, only uh, Captain Banks is necessary. Yeah, yeah, the rest of you can. Needed. Only Captain Banks is needed. Uh, okay. uh, Dr. Capella, yes, uh, you come come here, Dr. Capella. Thank you. So they, as you can see, they are no longer members of NATO. They seem to be holding a security, a, a security sense with the WHO. They are no longer members of NATO and should not be treated as such as members of NATO. Okay, it looks like he was uh, a wall, right. I guess. Eh, not real name. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Going? Yes. Not very organized. Yes, sir. So does it give us the right to threaten? Right. So. Continue. If the things have been brought up, we would require some clarification at this point. The floor is yours. You still with me, bud? Yeah. Oh, me. Uh, Captain Banks has been uh, is being sworn into the United Nations for service. Uh, if there was an incident between Captain Hawks and Captain Banks and yourself, uh, this would be the time to uh, air your grievances. Uh, they can answer for any actions Not they took. Myself, uh, correction. My private. A, cor a correction, Colonel. Uh, being sworn into the World Health Organization, sir. Yes, yes, security, uh, security forces. Uh, uh, there's my apparently an incident that occurred earlier today. Yes, of course. Oh uh, yes, with the uh, yeah. with the uh, private. Yeah. Uh, elaborate. Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, that's my apologies. I uh, I will be uh, blunt. I believe I'm not I here for your apologies. I'm here for an explanation. Oh, I'm gonna explain if you allow me to, sir. Go. On. Oh, your private was being very rude to uh, UN personnel as long as civilians 
walked into our camp like he owned the shit, and uh, thought he uh, thought he could just walk up to a random civilian and take their weapon. Now, having understanding your policies, I respect. And I understand. But you impeded him in his actions. Let him talk, life. Lieutenant, huh? Let him explain full story before you break in. I'm sorry, Captain, but I do not take, you know, people threatening my private slice very lightly. I understand, I and I apologize, but... What do you fucking insinuate, Please, Lieutenant? go on. Never. Yeah, what? Um, your private can what? proceed to take Never the civilian's weapon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and that's from previous experiences. I understand why that is. Um, however, the fellow UN soldiers seem to have an issue with that, um, and things escalated quickly. Okay. Uh, the on. privates Hold were giving us a venting added to... Yes, sir. Mr. Bay, may I stop you there for a moment? There. Just so that, uh, we understand what happened, okay? okay? Our private shows up to your camp, and he tries to take automatic rifle from civilian. Okay? Is that correct? Oh. Okay. Yes. It was designated okay. Marskman rifle from what I... Or whatever, it doesn't matter. The rifle he didn't like. He fought with data. Okay, and uh, WHO? Yes, sir? And the other captain uh, stopped him from doing this? Is that right? Yeah, I don't know where... Uh, sir. Uh, he didn't stop him. He was uh, very against the matter, sir. Well, what does that mean? What do you mean it's against uh, the matter? He did, the he, difference? Uh, the... I believe that uh, the UN are aware of your policy, sir. However, uh, they found it, uh, if somewhat intruding, uh, to have that policy enacted on a person inside of oh. a uh, UN camp. Okay, this UN camp is just on the hill, right? Up there? Okay. I, I don't think I have to remind you that uh, you're on CDF soil, okay? They are, uh, how you say, your host, you know? Their rules are your rules. Duh. And their rules are no civilians have automatic rifles. They've given us permission uh, to fuck well, on automatic rifles. What I actually heard when I was in the refugee camp, the civilians were allowed to have their rifles. I didn't really hear them taking that away. Well, at the did. moment, that is what this meeting was going All to right. lead to. As of today, mm -hmm. we also are going to be reinforcing this weapons rule, as our troops are uh, in need of these supplies, and it is not seen as fruitful. We have tried in many efforts to train these civilians to use weapons, and it hasn't been enough. So, as of today, we will be reinforcing this rule as well. That's exactly what part of this meeting was also to address. Hi. I see. Okay. It is in my opinion that Mr. Banks cannot be held accountable for not knowing uh, what was the position of the hosts. Okay, this council was just made an hour ago. So we'll let bygones be bygones, eh? Lieutenant, eh? He didn't know. I understand. Yeah, sure. That still doesn't explain the other captain and his actions from the U.S. and a Captain Hawk or Eagle or Hawk. Was I don't it around the same part. situation? No. It was the exact no. same situation, though. I was having Mr. Banks back over there. How are you, Mr. Banks? Yeah. Oh. Ah, there, I was having Mr. Banks back over there, hi. Oh, it's me, Danny. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. It brought to my attention that your men went through our, our supply uh, containers and uh, tents without asking us, just walked in oh. like they owned the place. What? It's not really kindly going through our supplies like that as well. We don't go through your airfield, what you claim right now, and uh, start taking things, I don't you think? Actually, I'm pretty sure you do, as I found your men up there myself, but that is beside the point. What exactly are you implying, that my men were stealing from your camp? Well, they were going aye. through like they owned the camp, aye. Perhaps you should invest in more guards. I've only seen mice. Well, we were following them and basically... Uh, regardless, that is not training. what the discussion is about. UN. Why was it... <laughs> Good joke! <laughs> UN tells us about the training! <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck! <laughs> I can't handle this! <laughs> fuck my life! Okay, let's get back on track. My question fuck is... Me. Uh, you bank and it's Hawk. No, 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 why no was more. there a threat on my uh, people's lives? Why were my hey. privates threatened? 
Uh, Banks is no longer a member of the EU. Well, they were uh, not listening to our orders and they were uh, getting Banks really, uh, no sort of, let's say, risky with us. And is that the proper the, procedure from to deal with uh, other militaries? Well, uh, it's not so a procedure to tell us that you're going to gun us all down when we don't leave the airfield. That's not civil as well. Uh, I know it's your quarantine zone, but that's not civil as well. That, that is beside oh, the point. Yeah. Wait, Listen, uh, uh, I think uh, what uh, this boils down to, right? Uh, uh, our private, I think, overstepped himself. Uh, if he's going to do an official, uh, how you say, inspection, you know, he needs to talk with the captain first, you know, courtesies and that sort of shit. I don't want the uh, privates just poking their fingers in other camps without a uh, uh, little bit of respect. And they just uh, responded maybe too much, you know, but uh, I think it's forgivable. You know, they didn't actually shoot him and it was heated conversation. But certainly nothing out better, uh, much more than an eyelash yet. <sighs> Mistakes happen, you know, this is uh, sticks and stones, I think. Uh, anyway, okay. does anyone have any further uh, issues they'd like to discuss? I know we've gone over quite a lot here. Well, the moment I would like to, uh, I would like to exactly address why have the UN been confiscating weapons from, well, civilians in the Chernigorsk area who are identifying as law enforcement with proper law enforcement credentials, whether they are garbed into civilian clothing or not, they are identifying with proper credentials. Captain oh. mm. Hawk, do you know anything about this? I am not. That is a negative. That's my first time hearing about so-called Rodriguez even pointing weapons. What someone here mentioned, I. There are plenty of things like right here in the Blue well, it's, uh, right. it's possible that any one of them could be robbing people in the name of the UN. I'll, uh, I'll uh, question my senior staff during our morning briefing right tomorrow. Why did he say Mrs. Rodriguez? Well, I didn't say her name right then. If you are going to speak, please step farther away. Uh, what was that? About that? You said that Mrs. Rodriguez, you had no knowledge of her doing this, but I didn't say Mrs. Rodriguez. Well, I do believe someone mentioned her name, a lieutenant, sorry, well... Uh, a lieutenant who's a female within so-called the UN rankings, that's what I heard. I that, well, what correct I me if I'm wrong. The UN had been well, someone mentioned their name here earlier. Well, that was a different stance, but fair enough, I well, suppose. Well, that means then I got uh, wrong information here. In any case, uh, law enforcement is not to be disarmed by uh, UN personnel for any reason. If uh, it was a colonial imposter of some sort, we'll be sure to track them down and uh, <clears throat> put an end to their confiscations. But if it was one of my people on some misguided, misinformed uh, mission, uh, that mission will be put to an end immediately. Understood. Uh, uh, I know this meeting comes off uh, a little bit like, a hey, UN, we fucking hate you, okay? And, uh... Sergei, for one, uh, apologizes for this sort of sentiment, but uh, uh, it has to be aired, you know, if these sentiments are here, they need to be brought up and defended, and uh, otherwise it just festers and put you up into something stupid, you know. So I'd like to take out one more thing that I have some information about. I do believe uh, Mr. Dr. Keller has, Capella here has come to a Notice to me that one of your men has threatened her life. As in, uh, if she doesn't well, find the uh, cure for the, uh, as if she doesn't find the cure for the uh, infection, I, I believe so. The circumstances, oh. I do believe it happened back at the Romeo Foxtrot, as in down of Cabanino. I, she brought it up to me a few days ago. Okay. Uh, okay. So she was sharing me life on that. Like. Uh, she was told that uh, by one of our privates or someone that uh, if she did not find cure, that she would be killed. Is that what you're saying? That, that was, aye, that sounds like there was a death, uh, well, aye, that is basically what was, uh, well, understood from the saying of how he phrased the word, aye. Okay, did you get the name of the person who said this? Oh, uh, Dr. Capella. Any, any way you got their name, yeah, man's name? No. I, 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 I pro probably would remember his voice though. Still kind of, kind of haunts me. Listen, uh, uh, 
I don't want to be cruel here, okay? But uh, I've heard uh, stories as well about your doctor here uh, and her mental capacities, okay? Accusations from her are like accusations from two-year-old child. We don't take them seriously. If you have accusations from someone who's actually like all here, you know, mental capacity like uh, your commander, we will certainly, uh, how you say, take it seriously. But uh, cry whiny bitch. We're not going to hear it from my team. Well, I the crime on you, little bitch here, is looking for the research that we can all go home. I don't home. see any progress, if I'm being honest with you. Oh, you not well, I'm not seeing any research from the CDF side. Yeah, they've been Dr. Capel is well respected in the medical and scientific communities, and uh, she doesn't throw around baseless <laughs> accusations if uh, she says huh? something happens, and I, uh, I believe it happened. Respected to my ass, Commander. I know you've got to cover your ass for fucking taxpayer dollars here, but uh, we all know what's going on with her, huh? No need to sugarcoat this shit. Uh, I don't understand what you're alluding to, Captain Kirchhoff. Uh, would you mind uh, expelling it out for me? Maybe after meeting we'll have a little talk, okay? I was not aware that you did not know that she, uh, you know, uh, a little uh, incident with her mind, you know? No, I, I'm, I'm sure he, you want to say it. You, you can say it now. I, I don't care. Mm, no, go, go ahead. Don't miss. You uh, mm -hmm. uh, had a little issue with boyfriend, do you know? Little, uh, little breakdown, you know, went kind of nuts, fucking psycho. Oh, uh, kind um, of thing. not really. No, exactly. One She's wasn't not competent. Really. She can't even remember her own issues. Uh, we will not uh, take uh, accusations from her. Anyway, I'm not going to fucking risk uh, how you say. Okay. Security Council, uh, what you say, uh, cooperation. Integrity. Yeah. Off of, uh, duh, off of fucking, uh, relationships with women and uh, boyfriends and shit, eh? Uh, let's get to, like, more important issues. Just fuck me. Okay. NATO, UN, do you guys have any additional issues to bring up? Or are you trying to yes, push back we... quarantine? Yeah, no, yes, no. We, we have issues that we would like to bring up on our own. Okay, what are your issues? We there then. So the first thing we're gonna bring up is with you, the VDV, we no. want to do joint patrol. Oh, you want to help enforce quarantine? Yeah, so we wanna, we wanna do joint patrols along the northern highway where, like, with Severograd and all that to keep the infection out of Russia and assist you with that. Hey! <laughs> so the gay won't say no to help, huh? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to with the other men and, uh, we'll get, uh, discuss logistics, uh, certainly. Anything else, Nato? Alright, uh, we would also like to do military patrols within your installations, your military installations, to keep civilians out, to lessen the need of them having automatic weapons and the access to automatic weapons. Hmm. Let's say baby step first, uh, First we do patrol, we get used to you and your men to recognize who the fuck you are and how you operate before we get too close, I think. Baby steps. Okay, that can, that can, that is... Okay. Any further uh, comments, Nato? I'd like the floor to go to you in. And we got we got a few more things just coming. Okay. And then Ken. Okay. So number three is with the involving the WHO, and we want to be able to escort the WHO members into Ground Zero to get supplies to possibly bring out a cure for this infection, if that's all right with you. Sir, uh, that's us, not uh, your jurisdiction anymore. Hi. It's the uh, joint situation between UN and WHO. We won't require the NATO's assistance regarding that, sir. I'm not a sir. I am a sergeant. Thank you. 
Doesn't surprise me. Semantics, eh? Well, we all learned our link one way or the other. Oh, well. Okay, uh, looks like, uh, you probably won't be involved with that uh, incursion. Anything else, NATO? Yeah, uh, not with you, with the VDV. Uh, one thing with the UN, uh, we will be operating in the north area, and so we do we do want to have knowledge of when the WHO move up there, just in case they do need assistance of any way, shape, or form, so that way we can assist them, Colonel. Um, I've also been informed that Banks is not a member of the WHO. He is just a member of security forces for them. So it's not really his call. It is more your call, Colonel, on whether or not you want assistance from NATO. Uh, you'll be, um, of course, as a courtesy, a professional courtesy, uh, informed of any uh, scientific research going on in that area. But uh, Captain Banks has the full authority of the World Health Organization and security. Uh, uh, he's authorized to make those sorts of decisions. Uh, one of my guys named, yeah. uh, okay, so be it. White. Just tell him I'm looking for him, please. Oh, no, you're not on Anything else need, though? Just send him in my direction. Cheers, bud. Sorry, I'm just relaying, I'm relaying commands to other people in our FOB to let, uh, to let our, uh, warrant officer. Okay. No. So we, we have one more issue to bring up, and well, it's not really an issue, just a, a suggestion with the CDF. We would like to set up a joint NATO CDF base somewhere to where we can clear out infected and help them with their uh, taking back their country from this infection and this terrible plight that has been brought upon them as well. Well, I'm not exactly sure about the joint base at the moment. However, a joint operation would be something we can start with. If things go well from okay, there, we will reoccupy the town of Steroy, and that would be something we can do. But that is okay, for another that, time. Okay, that's reasonable. That's definitely reasonable. Okay, UN, uh, any final thoughts? I'll uh, leave it to my captains. The only thing I have to say is that, of course, you, uh, the CDF, uh, VDV, NATO, your your forces will be afforded full courtesy and respect uh, their due when they are present at our uh, encampment, uh, as long as they abide by the rules of our encampment. Uh, we expect uh, certain courtesies to be observed. I'm not saying we're the, the boss and it's our way or the highway or anything like that. Of course, it's, it's generation territory. We understand that. Just all I'm asking is uh, common courtesy and, and reasonableness. Uh, and, of course, I would expect the same courtesy to be extended to our personnel in your uh, encampments. Uh, that's all. Oh, if I could say that uh, okay. uh, you send a, a letter to uh, my communications officer detailing your uh, niceties and policies that we may observe so we do not fucking accidentally bump shoulders. Nah? That sounds reasonable. And I'll make sure that if my I people... Can uh, jump in. Uh, please do, Sergeant. I'm, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Colonel, but I, I would like to just jump in one more thing. Um, we do have, we do want to inform all of you that there are two members who may be masquerading as NATO. Uh, their names are Owen Smith and Cameron Perth. They are to be treated mm, as terrorists. This is man too. Can we have some private checkups here, Romeo? They have challenge they're, they're, coins. There's some people around there. Even, even with challenge coins, they are to be considered terrorists, as I they have made a hostile action on NATO already once before. Look uh, Romeo, upon their, uh, upon their immediate discharge from their that, uh, posts for uh, mental incompetence. So they are to be deemed as terrorists of the state and be dealt accordingly. So do keep an eye out for them. Uh, I do also want to reiterate that any form of terrorist attack that is deemed onto you guys from any person will be then considered an attack on NATO, and we will bring off the full assistance of NATO's forces to assist all of you. I think VTV thinks NATO needs to watch their recruiting methods if fucking, what, 40% of their fucking crew disbands and goes insane, huh? God damn, eh? It's only it's only two that went insane. The others were transferred, as with Banks and the others. They were transferred, but only two yeah. did go insane. Uh, okay. We'll look out for these two. Any further comments from UN? Uh, that's it. Uh, that's it from the United Nations. CDF. Any additional comments? Well, at the moment. 
I don't think we have anything to say. I mean, we've got a few things that we really, how you say, we want to enforce at the moment, but we have to have more meetings as this week goes on at the moment. Our country is very, as you can say, a complicated one. And as things happen, well, we'll have to update ourselves as things go. We will be sure to have a separate meeting with each of you after this, however, uh, as the days go on on separate policies between the two of us. Things that have to be handled delicately, but you get the gist of things so far. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see, today is uh, Monday. I've got it. Uh, uh, I suppose Bolota is good as any place, unless something fucking uh, really strange happens next week. Around the same time, we all meet here, and hash it out again like men, eh? <laughs> Sounds good. So in a week, we, we come back to... The, let us hope here. we're all alive next week, eh? These fucking gray skins and terrorists want us all dead. Let's not do their job for them, gentlemen, I think. Okay, so, to summarize meetings, CTF is going to give us itinerary of how we can assist them to get this quarantine zone fucked the back off up north again so Russia doesn't have to uh, work so hard because we're lazy. <laughs> uh, NATO's going to assist in some patrols. The UN will give us a list of niceties and rules and camps so we don't accidentally fuck on them. And uh, we've requested that the UN shore up their, uh, you know, recruiting methods so that everyone's on the same page and shit. I think uh, that is what this meeting is done. We all agree. Let's return safely to our bases and uh, stay safe. You know, have a good night. Okay? Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Good, have a good one. That's done, yeah. Take care. Sure. You had uh, more to say? Yeah. Yes, uh, it, about that lieutenant I brought up earlier about him coming into our old FOB. Uh, I have communications from Warren Officer Reynolds that he wants you to put that on the top of your desk to investigate and bring us a report on to find out what the hell that was going on. Uh, because NATO is a independent body from you and there should be no authority from an UN peacekeeper to be over superseding a NATO operation whatsoever. Mm, you're absolutely correct. Uh, they had no authority to be there or certainly to make any kind of uh, demands of your people in the compound. I'll uh, try and investigate which lieutenant it was. I believe uh, Captain Hawk said it may have been Captain Hughes, but uh, I'll, uh, at the morning briefing I'll have all my lieutenants report about any activity in that area, determine who it was, and make sure that that uh, <clears throat> bit of overzealous or perhaps miscommunication is uh, dealt with. Yes, that sounds like a really good idea. Excellent. Uh, I send my regards yeah. to and, uh, uh, at some point. At some point, we would also like to talk to the WHO representatives. Uh, Warren Officer Reynolds would like to talk to them personally about some things. Um, he should be getting back here soon, hopefully. Uh, so hopefully, we can work something out with the uh, WHO representatives if that's all right with you. That's fine with me, as long as they've got the time and availability to do it. To do it, they're very um, busy there these days, and the research is. Uh, of utmost importance, yes, so yes, uh, I don't be discouraged if uh, they do turn you away out of the interest of, uh, you know how it is when you're trying to write a paper and people keep knocking on the door, they may have to turn you away, but it's not yeah, but, uh, oh, we'll get, uh, oh, get yeah, you on the I totally understand that. Alright, sounds okay. good, thank you. Until we meet again. had a All right, that went uh, better than I would have hoped, but uh, we'll have quite a bit to talk about at the uh, morning briefing. We'll need the senior staff to be uh, briefed mm -hmm. on the uh, topics of discussion as well as the outstanding items on our end. There's a, a bit of shit we'll need to shore up that can't keep happening. Disarming civilians, disarming churn Russian uh, law enforcement, that's uh, not something that can continue. Well, I do believe most of the uh, officials are here, so now looks like a be the best time.
Yep, that would be best. God, it's so foggy down here. How the hell? It's like nobody can see yeah. the gray. So close to the there. ocean. The fog for the ocean coming in, I do believe so. Well, that went better than expected. There wasn't any bullets flying about. They uh, mentioned the CDF uh, patrol base is set up uh, not far from here. Any idea of the uh, location of that base? Is that... Uh... I do believe it's only about 200 yards down the road from ours, uh, down the hill through the trees on the soccer field. Really? That close? I had no idea. I, I, I wasn't aware that they were that close. I thought they were up in Steroy still. Oh, they have a refugee camp, like I said, 200, 300 metres away from uh, Sierra Romano, sir. It's good news that the uh, quarantine zone is going to get pushed further north. Uh, it was going to be very, very difficult to get anything done with that uh, quarantine uh, zone uh, creeping further and further south. Well, unless I heard incorrectly, sir, they did say that we are allowed uh, access to their quarantine zone, no matter how large it is. Well, we may have to uh, give a heads up to the Russians before we make any incursions into the quarantine zone, but uh, at least we'll be able to make some headway uh, up there. I'd like to uh, see if we can ensure access and provide access to the uh, military base north of Severograd. There's been a lot of reports surrounding the uh, scientific relevance of that particular location, and uh, there may be a wealth of research that could be gained there. I had to believe I brought that up several times myself. I'm just waiting for the go-ahead for the uh, oh. mission to go up there. Hopefully we can uh, ensure a mission or some kind of incursion up there in the next week or so. There'll be a lot to do. We'll need to. Uh, uh, we're going to get orders from the Chern Russian Defense Force uh, to uh, clear out and reclaim territory from the Greys. We'll have to search and uh, and clear certain cities block by block, street by street, to uh, confirm disinfection, and then radio to CDF command once the areas have been uh, recaptured. That'll have to come before we can make any incursions north. Well, it's of my understanding, sir, that no matter how many you kill, there's always going to be uh, the odd dozen still hanging around. Gunshots drag them from all other areas. So after we finish clearing the area out, after we leave, the gunshots that were fired will only drag in more from the surrounding area. But it will wipe out most of them. Making it more it's safe actually, for the civilians. Uh, that's the big thing. As long as it's uh, safe for the civilians, they can start uh, reclaiming some of these uh, cities, repopulating housing, could provide some food. It's going to be pretty hard to regain public trust if we don't have uh, the public. Well, to be quite frank, sir, I do believe a lot of the public are on our side. It seems like the CDF and the VDV um, have problems with us, but the civilians have problems with them. Well, the reports I've been hearing have been less than uh, stellar from civilians. Apparently they think we're not doing enough to help them. We're, t we're leaving them out to, to, to fend for themselves. Uh, they, I've received a lot of outcry from the uh, <clears throat> general public that we uh, should hold more... Uh, short-term helpful things like uh, passing out clothing, blankets, shelter, food, drinks, 
uh, things like that, humanitarian aid, instead of running around and, uh, well, what their perception of us is that we're running around bossing them around, apparently. Well, to be honest, sir, when you have a, a few bad eggs, it's quite hard to distinguish of, from uh, who actually is there for God's honest help. Or who's just there to make trouble. Oh, that's an understatement. It's like finding a needle in a stack of needles. You don't know who's here to help you, who's here to hurt you, who actually needs help desperately, who's an undercover agent. And that's the other thing. Now these uh, Russians have indicated that they've got undercover agents uh, walking among, among the civilian populace. And if we capture them, we're to turn them over. They're just going to flash their ID at us and we just have to let them go scot-free. Same goes with us, I suppose. Well, apparently the uh, CDF are doing the same thing, so... Uh, I guess part of our normal procedure when we uh, find civilians uh, lurking around town or, or camp is we're going to have to shake them down and uh, ask them for any kind of identification they might have and see if they belong to any of the uh, other Security Council organizations. Mm-hmm. You hear what he said about uh, Dr. Capella? Their lieutenant. I, I heard that. Do we have any reason to believe that uh, any of what that lieutenant said was true? I personally haven't heard any reports from that, sir. And I'm here quite often, so... If either myself or Hawk didn't hear it then I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't take it to be true I'm likely to think it was all a lie that uh, lieutenant of theirs was spewing all kinds of bullshit trying to uh, get his, uh, his captain to think we're incompetent assholes now he's trying to belittle our uh, <laughs> probably one of our brightest researchers and make us think that she's just a raving lunatic or some sort of uh, jilted lover it's a uh, kind of saddening. I do. Mm -hmm. I do believe he's trying to paint it in a bad light to the, to the NATO and the CDF. But only time will tell. Hard, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can't exactly paint one of the uh, greatest minds in the world, uh, one of the uh, brightest World Health Organization researchers, uh, as a lunatic just because she's a woman and she had an ex-boyfriend, apparently. It's, uh, Dr. Capella says that one of the uh, Russians threatened her life, then I believe that one of the Russians threatened her life. If they don't want to take any accountability for that, then it's not a whole hell of a lot I can do about it. But I'm not going to stand by and let her just let them uh, just belittle my, my staff, and call my people insane. Mm -hmm. You got some nerve. I don't know how they do business in Moscow, but uh, it's not going to fly here. Well, looks like the camp is still standing. That's good. Aye. For now. <laughs> it won't be long until for the now. next uh, problem arises that we'll need to deal with. I mean, I can't have an opinion on them, but like, I want to do my research and they kind of stopping it and I, I just want to be able to do my job and like to try to, it's almost like they want us to take a piss take like let us be alone and do our job and let us all lie it's just uh, it's so unnecessary what they did walk right into the camp in the sense of, uh. everything all right colonel yes there's gonna be uh, quite a bit of uh, damage control to do and uh I'll need to prepare a few uh, debriefs and uh, reports. 
Hi. At least we uh, step back from the brink of war, which is nice. Well, I had really doubt that when the VDV virus came down here, thinking they're all about shit. I doubt where well, we three was gonna keep because of some stupid private thinking they're fucking. Hmm. To believe uh, Dr. Capella is uh, right now really pissed off the current situation that no one believed her story. Uh, None of them believed her story, been... but uh, we do, we we know what happened. We know the truth. If they're not going to help us, if they're going to attempt to uh, belittle her and uh, deny any liability or cul culpability in what happened, well, uh, there's nothing exactly I can do to force their hand in that matter. But uh, we can uh, we can pursue. Uh, that particular investigation on her own. If we can find, she said she recognizes the gentleman's mm. voice. So if we find him, we can get his name. Uh, and we can uh, take it from there. Whether they think this man exists or this event happened or not, should, is another story. I do believe we should. I do believe we should have brought up the war crimes and beating civilians and robbing them. Not as just disarming them, robbing them. That's what I've heard around the lines. This is uh, something I want to bring up with the Russians one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, it's not something I don't want to bring up with uh, the Cherna Russian uh, representatives and NATO representatives uh, at the time. Oh, well, they should have been around. It's really it, it may have high, been uh, high value theater. Oh. Yeah, it probably would have made a splash. But uh, as a professional courtesy, I'd make uh, an allegation like that in the presence of uh, only the Russians. Hmm. I believe this gentleman in front of me was rifle was taken by one of the VDV members. Oh. I and the other one. Oh, yeah, two rifles. One of the VDV men took one of the rifles. But well, that's really interesting. We're gonna have civilians pop in here complaining about the CDF, the VDV. Sooner or later, probably the NATO as well, maybe. If they're all gonna start disarming the civilians. Well, they're going to be um, provided with a list of our... our protocols, and uh, disarming civilians within our camp will not be one of them. Uh, Chern, uh, Chern Russian mm. and uh, NATO forces will be afforded all regular courtesies, Russians will be on a uh, bit of a shorter leash, if you know what I mean. Uh, they're to observe all all uh, standards and all uh, rules of the camp, as well as any uh, rules or orders from UN personnel. That way uh, they're not going to be rifling mm -hmm. through our tents or bossing our doctors around or disrespecting our people. If uh, if they don't uh, follow the rules of our camp or the orders of our personnel, they can be evicted. Then, if one of these more things happen, then, well... You can believe it's gonna turn real south real quickly when I'm around and they start yeah. thinking that they own the place if, again. I'm just yes, saying that's that, not gonna fly. Good. Take whatever action you deem necessary. If uh, if a, a Russian uniformed Russian military personnel comes into this camp and dis disregards the order and uh, and rules of it, then uh, simply demand their name and rank. Uh, acquire it by any means you see uh, reasonably necessary. And then we'll uh, pass it to the chain of mm. command up to Captain Kirchhoff and see if he takes action. He understands the, uh, back, the uh, risk. If he doesn't. takes no action, we'll back out of the Security Council. Excuse me. I wanted to bring the matter of Coulson to your attention. Is he free to go? What are we going to do with him? He I don't believe quote, I, the resigned. Resigned. I got his credentials. I took his rifle away. Uh, he seemed to be going out with you in peaceful manner. Okay. I do no further action is required. Kirchhoff, uh, I mean, um, Coulson is a civilian now. He's, uh, he's welcome to leave. He's not, right. uh, as long as he doesn't, he understands he's, uh, the condition here is he's not to present himself as the United Nations personnel at any point to anyone for any reason. Right. Thank you. Oh, it all right. Well, things are looking. I doubt the gray cloud will now go away, but we still stay in here. Things are looking even more not that heated as they were, but they're still 
really heated. Tense. I haven't gotten a good sleep, good night's sleep in quite a while. Mm. <laughs> he said things that keep me up at, mm. uh, at night, you know? Aye. Well, right now, just as the BDV private came down here looking for a fight, they had, they knew what they were doing, they had the lieutenants around, they had their people around. Like, all bullshit that, uh, I, they should have showed their force and actually controlled their privates, not their fucking acted like that way. That would have caused a serious fucking war. Excuse my tongue as a captain, but... Well, apparently they run things a little differently over there. They don't uh, seem to really have a big uh, emphasis on the chain of command or of the etiquette mm. of uh, an officer or... Uh, much of anything, to be frank. They, uh, they don't they really seem like a they, bunch they call of us. We are unorganized. They are un unorganized. The fucking Russian military probably asks, You can drink two bottles of vodka? You can get in. Huh? <laughs> I think that's uh, about the only qualification I'd uh, I recognize that any one of them could probably pass. Did you notice the gentleman right. uh, standing to your left that entire conversation? He had like a red shirt on and a pair of red Converse yeah. shoes and jeans, and he was apparently passed off as totally a Russian fun. soldier. I'm not sure if they was just, we caught him on laundry day, uh, or what that was. Let's call it malfunction. Wardrobe malfunction. Apparently. But we're the unprofessional ones. <laughs> I didn't have their own order set. They're... It should be, but I heard that their major is sick, and uh, with the airfield, the Capitan took matters to his own arm. It comes... Remember the earlier he said he got orders from the Kremlin and there was all shit like that, but on the, de on, on the airfield he said that he actually took it on his, upon his own hand. And that sounded a little off. Yeah, I'm not really sure if that was just tough talk, or if he had uh, some sort of implied threat there, but I'd rather not find out. Hmm. Uh, was that Lieutenant Hodge up there? We need to have a speak with him, and then we need to probably have a speak with Lieutenant Rodriguez. Uh, Sam and Four, this is Sam and you. What is your current location? Alright, oh, looks like, um... Negative. I was asking for Sam and Four. Uh, Sam and four, this is Sam and two, come in over. Yes, sir. It's good to have people on the rooftops just making sure that uh, we've got all the angles covered. Well, what are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, I guess. Nice, good to hear. I'm pretty sure the motorized the VDV is just out of there from one of the rifles or something like that. And, uh, and they took a, a big sniper rifle from me. <laughs> I wonder why they didn't take the other rifles then. Yeah, I managed well, to convince I'm... him that it was single, you know, fire, you know, not automatic. Mm. Well, I'm... So in my warning that you should watch out since the CDF applied the rule that there'll be disarming people as well now, so uh, you might as well hide in the shadows. I do not believe we're forcing this rule around here, but they are so called forcing across the land, so no, I'm not interested you might as well in watch out civilians. Now. Right. Exactly. The Russians are yeah, a different story. I mean if I can uh, if I can uh, convince VDV I can probably convince uh, CDF so in well, we were so-called uh, worried that they're running out of supplies. The man himself, Richard, was using a goddamn old belly hunting rifle. Uh, that will probably tell their uh, station of uh, how they're doing on their weaponry. 
So I just uh, say, talk to your studio, maybe watch out because they will be probably starting to confiscate weapons sooner or later now. Well, uh, I guess I will, uh, I don't know, watch myself or something, I don't know. Alright. Now other people can start in the phone, they care, so... Yeah, you too. Uh, sir, Sam and four, this is Sam and two. Come in, over. Sound microphone activated. Uh, I know maybe we should have a talk with uh, Lieutenant Rodriguez while we, while we, while Lieutenant Hodge is probably doing something, not entering on his radio. I don't believe uh, Miss Rodriguez's name was uh, pointed out that she was pointing a gun at a civilian. In some correct? Yes, uh, Lieutenant Rodriguez was uh, they were accused of that. I'm going to have to uh, debrief oh, uh, Lieutenant Rodriguez on that particular account. Um. Uh, uh, Captain Hubbard as well. Ah, oh. Lieutenant Hodge, the man we were looking for. It's Lieutenant... Oh. Uh, Colonel Ripley, how are you doing? Ah, it's good to see you, Hodge. I've um, got a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. I don't mean to uh, put you on the defensive, but some accusations were thrown away around in the meeting that uh, Captain Hawk and I were just attending, and I just wanted to get your side of it, if that's all right. Okay. Okay, of course. Now, uh, of course, we uh, obviously ended up here at Sierra Romeo, but uh, after we were <clears throat> forcefully... Uh, encouraged, you could say, to leave uh, Golf Oscar. Uh, there was a, a moment in time when we were considering a factory building. I mean, the city of Polana has a secondary base, and uh, the accusation we heard was that one of our lieutenants showed up at that base where the NATO forces were currently using it as a uh, forward operating base, and apparently one of our lieutenants who matched your description showed up and started uh, making all kinds of bold claims and orders and uh, seeming to take charge and uh, uh, basically not exactly being a very good house guest, uh, being particularly rude and unprofessional, and uh, I just wanted to get your side of it and see if that actually occurred, if that was you, and if there was perhaps more to the story. Uh, sir, that was most definitely not me. Um, I've talked to one of the commanding officers of the NATO people, but it was just really, I was just trying to get a feeler of you know, how we operate together, but then things we just we just left. Uh, there was no no animosity. It was it was all fine. Like there was there was no problems. It was. Mm. It was There's good. no way they may have misinterpreted anything you said. Perhaps did you mention your rank? Perhaps and indicate to them that your rank was higher than theirs or anything along those lines. At any point in the conversation. Well, definitely not, sir. Definitely not, sir. That that didn't I'll happen. Chalk it up to a misunderstanding then. Obviously, uh, I, I, I believe your side of the story, uh, Lieutenant. I would just uh, remind you to uh, be on your best behavior when uh, at other uh, other designates of the uh, Security Council, the CDF, NATO, VDV, when inside any of their encampments, we are to observe uh, strict uh, protocol, uh, profi polite, uh, professional, courteous, and obviously observing their uh, their own uh, ranks and uh, guidelines. Uh, of course, sir. Uh Try my best at all times, and uh, I'm sorry if uh, you have to waste your manpower and time thinking about things like this. I guess, like as far as I see it, nothing happened. I don't understand what the problem is, sir. I'm really sorry. Well, uh, must have been uh, nothing happened. Then nothing I mean, happened. Well, let's just see if them. Uh, all right, I don't believe you. But I wasn't myself present. I was constantly talking on the radio and. Sending messages across to people. This guy just fucking fell off the roof, man. That's all So, what happened at the, the meeting then, Hawk? Well, uh, ah, well, we know, uh, the Colonel can. 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 Yeah. Company basically, but uh, I'll have my report ready in the morning. Okay, sir. Unfortunately, as it is, it looks like uh, Captain Hawk. I'm gonna have to get writing that report right now. Judging by the uh, length of that uh, that meeting and the amount I'll have to get through and radio back to command, I'll uh, I'll be tied up for the rest of the evening. So um, I trust you got everything under control, Captain. Uh, I have one more thing to brief up with you. 
Uh, first class, yes. Sergeant Acosta. Um, he doesn't know if he can feel like working with Lieutenant Rodriguez because considering her actions that she done, she doesn't feel he doesn't feel safe working with her. If she if she so, keeps pulling off uh, radio messages like that and doing what she does. Where, where the body is and look the distance hmm. from the hospital. That's also big. We need to talk to uh, Lieutenant about her conduct as of late to make sure that uh, uh, we're on the same page. If uh, first, uh, Sergeant First Class well. DaCosta has an issue, hmm. Hmm, perhaps I should talk to him personally as well. Uh, I, um, uh, what to bring up? Uh, I'm, I'm tip of my tongue now. God damn it. Uh, what was it about? Uh, uh fucking hell, I forgot it. Too many information going through my head. That's about uh, two and a half hours worth of meetings and reports. I've got 16 to get through. Uh, I do believe. Radio. Uh, be maybe we should have. Jesus, I just had it in my head and it went away again. Fuck me. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be live. It's supposed to be live. That's what they always say. I, uh, I do like to bring up this interesting, maybe we should have our own civilian camp up here. Uh, have the uh, this World Health Organization stop uh, security actually guard them and not them have been interrupted with unnecessary needs, but have people's close eye around here. Hi. Mm -hmm. When someone wants you to go to their camp, just Don't you think that is a good idea? We'll contact us. Yeah. I feel like sometimes if the people out. are... Uh, Push, well, we're sort of like pushing away people, don't you think so? It's up to uh, Dr. Capella and her staff. If we have the uh, resources and the time and the availability for it, then I'm open to uh, the possibility of opening a part, uh, part of the camp to uh, refugees as a shelter. Um, Captain Banks and his people could provide security for the World Health Organization and free us up to patrol. Uh, but it's up to, uh, it all comes down to uh, Dr. Capella and her staff. If their availability is limited, then our entire cha chain collapses and that whole plan goes to dust so mm. uh, we'd have to get that answer from her before we made okay. any plans mm. Hi. Hey, Hi. Hi. Um, oh, oh now i remember that uh jesus christ oh. just now. uh with uh lieutenant rodriguez when uh, when she's about to make any of these radio broadcasts she needs uh either to discuss it with the sergeants lieutenants or me or you or the major before making anything maybe get an idea if that is okay considering sergeants have so much uh, i do believe uh saying as well as a lieutenant as in uh, they've uh, earned their uh, status as well they do know maybe things that uh, the lieutenant doesn't know or has experience with so uh, i do advise that uh, you tell her to Always, uh, always to discuss something with, even if it's a low-ranking personnel, just to get an idea if our people like it or not. Yes, the last uh, two transmissions that uh, Lieutenant Rodriguez sent out, uh, I actually dictated to her word by word, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll let her know that if it's not me dictating it to her, that it should probably go by you or one of the other lieutenants first. As, uh, just as a, a, a quick glance over, another, an extra set of eyes to make sure that we approve of the message. Uh, exactly. I'm sure she'll be alright with that. Okay. Exactly. It's not going to act good on my end, though. Well, I really, uh, I do need to get uh, radio in command if I'm, if I'm going to make, uh, I think I was supposed to be on a few minutes ago, but uh, anyway, uh, you've got command, uh, Captain Hawk. I stand relieved. Lieutenant Hughes. You know, I, met, I, met, I met you up there, up on the rooftop there, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember you, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I had jeans on. <laughs> oh, boy, yo, boy, yo, boy. Yeah, yeah, 